Hey, let's get our Bibles if you don't mind. Very familiar portion of Scripture. We're going to the book of John, John chapter number one. John chapter number one. We're not preaching all of what we have here today from this verse, but I sure hope that we give you enough of something to really, really think about and consider. Don't forget, please be back here at two o'clock, and we're going to be dealing with that health meet that God has given to us and the one that He wants us to wait for and look for. And then at three o'clock, we're going to be dealing with you from John chapter number 21 and verses 5 and 6 mainly. We'll read verses 1 through 14 this evening. But 5 and 6 where the question was asked, children, have ye any meat? And the answer and response was, no. You had anything? No. There's a whole lot of preaching in that little phrase or that little thought right there. And God wants us today to understand why he's asking that question. Yeah. By the way, is he omniscient? Yes. And if he knows everything, he's got to be asking it for a reason. Yeah. And usually the reason is, I'll just be honest with you, is to help us. So I'm not here today to, to, to say you ain't got what you need uh, or you don't have what you think you have. Tonight, tonight, I want you to come back and realize this. God is asking that question so you and I can be honest so he can help us. Yeah. He just wants to help us. And I'm so glad I've got a God who looks at my life and says, I don't want to condemn you. I want to do all I can to bless you and be a benefit to your life. Amen. Amen somebody. Amen. And so we're going to talk about that this evening. But this morning, we're going to be dealing with this thought, made flesh and dwelt among us. Look at verse number 14. John chapter 1, verse number 14. And the word, get this, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. I'll tell you something. Sometimes I think about how God lays some things out. I know we just try to do the best we can. I hope everybody prays about the thing that they have to do. Me to preach, uh, Miss Sue to play, others to lead to singing, or whatever you got to do. You, you got to be praying so yes. you can be in tune with God. Amen. And I kind of believe today we're in tune with God. I know I've been praying, and uh, man, I'm just so thankful for this thought. The Bible says to us, and the Word was made flesh. Mm -hmm. And dwelt among us. Boy, that's so key and so important. Christmas is about the Word becoming flesh, that Jesus Christ, and dwelling among us. So as we get into this Christmas season, I should have hoped and I should have prayed that I'd be able to get you excited about what God did for us during what we call Christmas time. I don't know the exact day, but I do know one thing He was born. Amen. I don't understand, again, all of the details behind how God did, why he did, what he did. But I do know one thing. I'm glad he did what he did. Amen. Because if he wasn't born, I'd still be in trouble. Amen. And so God was made flesh and dwelt among us. The word, particularly, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Father, bless now, I pray. Help us to get a hold of this great truth. And... Uh, Lord, it's just something to get us excited, I pray, as we, again, just remember, I was reading through the book of Deuteronomy in Jesse chapter number 8, where over and over again you said, remember, remember, remember. And then you got down in there and you said, here's the reason to remember, so you won't forget, forget, forget. Dear God, I hope we always remember and never forget why Jesus Christ came into this world, why he was made flesh and dwelt among us. I hope dear God would be something that would excite our soul in a special way. Please help us right now, I pray, as many people are preparing and many people are, again, setting up fest, uh, celebrations and, and, and different other things going on during this time that's for Christmas. Let us remember Jesus, as we say, is the reason for the season. Yeah. In his precious name, we do ask blessings upon this message in our hearts our lives will be changed. And all that people said, amen. amen. I want you to look at this again, and I want you to write down three things real quickly, and then we'll go back in and we'll work with them. The first stuff I want you to write down is the manifestation. The manifestation. The manifestation. There's another word that we use many times when we deal with this. It's called the incarnation. Mm -hmm. The incarnation. That's when the God, in, in, uh, who, who is Jesus Christ, the Word, became flesh and, of course, dwelt among us. 
God became a man like you and I, yeah. a person, a human being. And we're going to deal with that, uh, what that all means, or, or how we can really appreciate what God did for us. And I sure hope you get that. Number two is the meaning. What is the meaning behind, and the uh, word was made flesh and dwelt among us. What does that really mean? We're going to give you a couple things to consider and look at when we look at the meaning of made flesh and dwelt among us. Then number three, I want you to write this down. The message. The message. What is the message behind God being made flesh and dwelling among us? Now, again, I know you know a lot of this stuff, but here's what God is saying. Don't let them forget it. That's right. Don't let, let That's make right. sure they remember it. Make sure it's something that stirs their heart every time. Maybe you come to this portion of scripture or another portion of scripture like this. About Jesus coming to the world like Galatians 4 and verse number 4. Yeah. About him, of course, yeah. being born of a virgin, of course, that God said he would over in Isaiah chapter number 7. And at the fullness of the time, yeah. God let him come into this world. You and I today need to make sure this world does not steal the joy that we have yeah. of Christmas. Yeah. Amen. I'm not telling you anything again about all the I'm not going that way. I'm not even looking at all of the things the world is doing. I'm looking at us as a church, yep. as a body of baptized believers, having an excitement because Christ came into the world. Somebody say amen. amen. So the first thing we need to look at today is what's known as the manifestation. The manifestation. Now please understand, John is trying to teach us some stuff. So what we're doing here right now is we're taking hold of the things that John has said to us about Christ coming into the world. So we have this manifestation of the flesh. Now look if you would please at verse number 14 again. And the word, get this now, was made. Yeah. Wait a minute now, would you get this? Flesh and dwelt among us. When we say the word was made, we're not talking about the word being created. Right. We need to understand something about the Word, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's two basic words when you come to the Word in the New Testament. There's the Word, which is the spoken Word, right. and that's the Word that in the Greek, and I'm not trying to get you and all that, is rima. That's where, again, we have a spoken word, a written word. That's right. But then we have the logos. Yep. We have the logos. Yeah. What is the logos? You heard that word? And that's the complete word. Yep. Yep. That's the finished word. That's the final. Come on, yeah. somebody. And God is saying, I want you to understand something here. The logos came a man and he dwelt among us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How do you know this, this preacher? Go to John 1, verse number 1. John 1, and some things you got to get down about Jesus Christ. Which should make you excited. Yeah. Which should give you some joy. Yeah. Which should encourage your heart as you go through life. Realizing that the word, Jesus, God, was here before us. But he came down to be with us. Amen. Yeah. He said in John 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. word and the word. word was God. And the word, word was God. Now I want you to get this thing down here. Because God wants us to see something here. And I, I never ever noticed it. But every time God spoke about him. God said he was the word. That's right. The word. That's right. The word. You know what that means? There's no other word like this word. Amen. Amen. There's nobody. Come on somebody. Amen. Nobody else like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The, Jesus Christ <coughs> was the word that was in the beginning. He's the word that was with God. He's the word that was God. Yeah. And God is saying here, this manifestation of the word should excite us. Why? Because first of all, under the manifestation, write this down. He is the eternal word. Yeah. The eternal word. The word that was in the beginning, the beginning is in, is not in the beginning, but the truth of the matter is this, God is saying, the only way for me to give you a point of, of, of a, a position and a point of, of where you can think about, is I had to say the beginning, but he was before the beginning, amen, right, right. he was the one who helped with creating all yeah. of the beginning, how do you know that preacher, I read verse number two, the same was in the beginning with God, verse three, and all things were made by him, without him was not anything made, that was man. Hey, he's yeah. eternal, amen. Yeah. Everlasting, everlasting, oh, yeah. from generation to generation. Yeah. Here before it got started, yeah. and here after yeah. things get done, amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now wait a minute, now I don't think we understand that. You say, preach, I do understand that. God said, if you would understand that, the eternal God was made flesh 
and dwelt among us, you and I will learn to appreciate him more. That's right. That's good. He didn't have to do any of this for us, yep. but he did it for us. The eternal God, who in the beginning said, the day you eat of that tree, you should surely die. Of course, Adam ate, Eve ate, but did this now. The Bible said that all of us have sinned, and death passed upon all men, because all have sinned. Yeah. None of us can look at Adam and Eve and say, it's your fault. Oh no, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the eternal God said, guess what? I got to do something about what happened to my man. Amen. He's eternal. Wait a minute now. God said, I want you to understand something here. In the beginning was the word. That beginning, God is saying to just give you a point of reference. Right. But notice this here. The environment he was in. The environment in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. God, do you say, do you see where he was at? Mm -hmm. Do you see in the beginning it was God the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And in what he did, Brother Mike, he was made flesh. Yeah. And he dwelt among right. us. Right. You know, I look at this here and I start saying to myself, I wonder would I leave the best thing that I could ever have, the best place that I could ever be. Yeah. I mean, just the best of the best of the best and come down to work with a wicked, sinful people. But praise God for the manifestation of the word. Amen. Amen. He left the throne in glory. He left the angels that were at his beck and yeah, call. Yeah. He left the, all of the stuff that we're looking forward to getting to. He left all of that, the environment he was in, to come to this environment, this wicked place, yeah. this sinful place, yeah. this defiled place. He came here so you and I would have to go down there. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking about the manifestation, yeah. the eternal word, the environment that the word was in. And then please get this so you don't get fooled. He was equal. The word was equal yeah. with God. Both a lot of preaching in this one verse. In the beginning was the word. Yes. And the word was with God, the environment. And the word was God. Yeah. He was equal. When you go read Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and on down to a few of the following verses, you'll find out he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Yes. In other words, he, he made himself no reputation, but he was equal with God. That's right. In other words, he took and set aside all of his maybe things he could have done because he's equal with God. Yes. So he can come here made flesh and dwelt among us. Now you listen to me real good. Who would do something like that for you and I? Knowing all that he had. Yeah, yeah. Knowing where he was. Realize he had already warned us before, Brother Miguel, the beginning. That's right. But he was made flesh and he dwelt among us. Yeah. And God said, I want you to get that down today. Because when we look at our lives, nobody in here can say, I deserve what he did for me. Mm. Nobody here can say, I've earned what he's done for me. Yep. Now the one of us here can say, as we look at our lives, I'm telling you something here, when you measure me up to somebody else, I'm better than they are. Hey, we might be better than somebody else, we might be more wicked than somebody else, but none of us measure up to the almighty God. That's right, amen. God said, I want you to understand something, the manifestation. Who came into <laughs> this world to be with us? It was God. Somebody say amen. amen. I need you to take and understand the words that we hear many times. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. God with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to label that some more. Yeah. But God said, did you get it? When Jesus Christ came into this world, he was and always is God, but he was God with us. Amen. amen. God said, I want to be with you. That's right. God said, I want to come down and help you. Yeah, yeah. Christmas is about God saying, I love you so much. And the only way that I can take and deliver you was yeah. to come to be with you. Yeah, that's good. Why? Because the way God set it up. Yeah. So that leads to this here, the meaning. The meaning of made flesh and walked among us. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
I want you to write down what I call the precept in the teaching. <coughs> the precept in the teaching. And then number two, I want you to write this down. The pictures in the teaching. The precept in the teaching. And then the pictures in the teaching. Boy, if you knew what I already had in my heart, you'd be shouting right now. You'd be saying, wait, preach the time, time out. I just need to thank God for what he's done for me. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. Now get this. And dwelt among us. He did what? Dwelt among us. What does that mean? Under the precept, in the beginning, in Genesis, I mean, Exodus chapter 25, verse number 8, the Bible said, God said, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Yeah. What did he do? The precept is, he made a tent yeah. so he could dwell yeah. among us. Amen. In other words, God said, and by the way, when he made that tent, he had this outer court, and then he had this place, and he went into called the, uh, 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 the, the, the holy place, and then he went into the holy of holies. <laughs> All of that right now, God said, I want, and I'm going to get to that in a moment in the pictures, but here's what God is saying. I made sure that man knew some, who, God, thank you. Yeah. he wasn't alone, amen. Yeah. Yeah. I want a man to know I was there with him. I was here to help him. I was going to encourage him and get him through. His yeah. sinful life. That's right. Why is that important? Because he didn't have to do it. Okay. And then the other one that I want you to give the word tabernacle. He tabernacled among us. That's right. Oh, some things we're going to talk to you more about that tabernacle. And again, what what that tabernacle means is, is that he came, but he didn't come to stay. That's right. He just tabernacled among us. I'll get to, ooh, I'll get to that in just a moment. I'm a little excited about that. But write this if you don't mind. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, verse 14, And therefore shall, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Yeah. God with us. Again, Matthew 1, verse number 23. Behold, a virgin that shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted so we don't get it wrong, is God with us. God said, get the precepts here. There was a tent so I can dwell with them, and then all of a sudden there's a tabernacle so God could be with us. But wait a minute now. All of a sudden the Bible said, and he was made flesh and he dwelt among us. That's right. He was a tent among us, a tabernacle among us. That's the precept. Yeah. Now what is the picture? God is saying, I want you to understand something. That tabernacle and that tent, they had the same type of a setup, basically. There was, again, the outer court and then the holy place and then the holy of holies. Yeah. And the outer court, we had that, that brazen altar and we had that, 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 that the golden labor. And then when we got on the inside, we had showbread and we had the lampstand and we had the altar of incense. And when we got further inside, we had the ark. Come on, somebody. Yeah, where the cherubims were. And in between, hey. the, the presence of God. Right. On the inside was the law. And on the inside was the pot of manna. And on the yeah. inside was the rod of Aaron. Yeah. But God is saying, guess hey. what? All of that right now represented me and God is saying here's what we've done we've read through that especially in Exodus chapter 25 all the way to the end of the book of Exodus and God said we didn't get a hold of what he was doing he made this and he made that and he made this and he made that why did you do it all I made the altar for a sacrifice I made the labor for your sanctification I made the showbread to sustain you I gave you the lampstand to shine the light before you I gave you all the vision for your supplication and I gave you the ark so that you can always understand that I am present with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And the word was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. Amen. God is saying our biggest problem today is this. Good. We don't realize all he did. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's just one picture of him coming into this world. Yeah. So here's our biggest problem today. And I'm telling you something. The church has forgotten all yeah. about that everything we need, we find in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And he said, that's why I did it. Again, I didn't, I didn't just come to save you. That's at the altar. But I came to sustain you. Yeah. To shine a light in front of you. Yeah. To make supplication and intercession for you. I came today so that you can always know 
I was going to be with you. Yeah. Praise God. <coughs> Let me get to point number three so I still got some shouting. Yeah. First there's the man manifestation. And then there's the meaning. Number three, there's the message. <coughs> there's the message. Woo, Brother Jacob. Like I said, if you knew what I had written down, you say, can we have a time now, preacher? <laughs> so I can just shout about what that means for me. Yeah. There's a yeah. message God is saying. Right. God said when he came to the tent, by the way, those tents didn't stay in the same place. Right. Yeah. When he came to the tabernacle, God just said, if you can understand something here, I'm going to change things up later on. Yeah. You know now, you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. We understand that. But please understand something here. God's not trying to take and stay with us here. God is going to take and one day bring us over there. Amen. 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 And he said, you don't even get it. Yeah. By the way, I didn't get it either. So I started asking God some questions. Do you remember this word in the Bible called sojourner? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? That's tabernacle. Yeah. That word is the same one for him dwelling among us. Now, do you understand something here? He didn't stay here. That's right. Yeah. He tabernacled here, but really he sojourned here. Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, we sing a song that deals with Abraham. This world is not my home. I'm just a pastor. Right. Yeah. I want you to write that down now underneath the message. And we'll come back and explain it. First of all, he said, I, I, I'm just a sojourner here. Mm -hmm. Sojourner here. And then, then write this down. That, that, that little phrase about him dwelling among us, tabernacling among us, Jesus tried to let us know. He was the shepherd here. He's the shepherd here. Now remember, when it comes to this tabernacle, and we'll get to it, that soul journey, that's why that word is so important to start with. God is saying, there's going to be a transition going on. Matter of fact, let me just help you. When, 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 when Ruth's family, Elimelech, right, and, right. and all of them went down to Moab, right. they went to soul journey. Right. They went right. to what? Soul journey. Right. And God is saying, I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ came here too. Soldier. Yeah. And see, when, when, they, when, when things were over, when the famine was done, they thought they were going back to Bethlehem, Judah, but they right. ended up staying in Moab. Yeah. Bethlehem, Judah, the house of God's bread and right. praise. But God is saying, they stayed in the place where the wash pot was. Yeah. I need you to understand something here. Oh, yeah. Jesus didn't die in this place. Jesus Christ went back to the place where, come on, somebody, yeah. where it came yeah. from. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I got to get going here. There's a sojourning. He's a shepherd. I didn't get this down here. When they say he dwelt among us, it was just temporary. Why? Because he's also the soldier. That's right. Number three, the soldier. God is saying our biggest problem today is this. We don't understand all what he did, so because of that, we don't have the shout that we should have. That's right. We don't have the, 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 the excitement and the joy because we don't understand he dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. Now he did dwell, but he's not here anymore. That's right. Matter of fact, the Bible lets us know that he got up from that old grave. Amen. Yeah. He hung out here for those 40 days, and then 10 more days that he was up there praying, and then all of a sudden the day of Pentecost came. Yeah. So here's what God is saying. I need you to realize what I did for you. That's right. When he sojourned, the sojourner is a place, is a person, is a, is a place a person resides in, and he goes to a community or a place to get business accomplished in, and then he's going to leave that place he went to do that business so he can go back home. Yeah. yeah. Let me, brother Les, let me tell you about this now. Here's what happens many times. I don't know which way you want to deal with it. But what you do is sometimes you sojourn here in Fallon. But when you get done with your business, you go back home. Amen. Amen. In other words, you don't come here to stay. Or maybe you don't go there to stay. Whichever one. You're going to keep on going back and forth. Once the business is conducted, God said, I welcome among you. Why? Because I conducted my business. Yeah. Amen. I completed my business. John 19 and 30. He said, it is finished. And when he got done up from the grave, yeah. he, all of a sudden, he took off toward the clouds. Why? Because this world wasn't in his home. Amen. Yeah, man. God is saying, 
You and I are getting excited about that. Yeah. Why? Because we sing it, but we just don't get yeah. it. Come on now. We sing it, but we just don't understand it. We sing it, but let me just say, this world is not my home. Yeah. I'm just up passing through. Yeah. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Yeah. The angels beckon me from heaven's open shore. And I just can't feel that home in this world anymore. I'm just a sojourner down here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is saying, Woo. you ought to be glad. That this is not the final place. Mm -hmm. Let me move on so you can get the rest of this thought. Not only he's a sojourner, but he's the shepherd. When he came down here, that word dwelling among us, that's what a shepherd does yeah. with his sheep. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you have realized in Luke 15, the only time he went and left his sheep was when one got lost. That's right. Other than that, the shepherd stayed right there with his sheep. Amen. Whoo, boy, I've gotten the great heaven. That excitement going on. Go ahead. I'm so glad when it comes to our shepherd. By the way, think about this here. In the Old Testament, their brother Jason, the sheep always gave his life so the shepherd could live. Yeah. He always came and got a lamb sacrificed him, put the blood on the altar so that all the people could live. That's right. But in the New Testament, oh, no, the lamb didn't give his life for the shepherd. The Bible said the shepherd gave his life for the sheep. Amen. Hey. The shepherd laid down his life oh, so I wouldn't have to give up my life. The shepherd laid down his life hey. for to have eternal life. Hey. Somebody say amen. Hey. God is saying he just dwelt among us. He tabernacled among us. And this old good shepherd that we've got. Yeah. He came to be, listen to me now, a good shepherd, a great shepherd, and he's our chief shepherd. Yeah. 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 Oh, let me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Christmas is more than not about a baby in a manger. Amen. Amen. It's about the one who was here for 33 years. Yep. Left this place. So you and I, we have to stay in this place. That's right, that's right. As the good shepherd, write it down. The Bible says in John 10, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Remember I said in the Old Testament, the sheep gave his life. But in the New Testament, John 10, 11. And the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Amen. Yeah. God, thank you for being made flesh yes. and dwelling among us. Amen. Because if you didn't give your life, I'd be still on my way to a burning hell. Amen. Yeah, that's right. I'm so glad. Now get this now. Why does the shepherd give his life? So he can save that's right. the sheep. Amen. And I don't see the good shepherd, but he's the great shepherd. Write it down if you don't mind. Still let me say amen. amen. He is the great shepherd. The Bible lets us know that uh, in verse Hebrews 13, 20, now the God of peace brought again the, uh, uh, from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Let me make sure I slow that down. Now the God of peace, get this now, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Mm. As the good shepherd, he saves the sheep. As the great shepherd, he supplies what the sheep need. As the Bible says to us in Psalm 100 verse 3, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, he is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. Aren't you understanding this now? The Lord's my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. Amen. He's making me to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. He leads me beside still waters. Yeah. God is saying, you need to understand something here. The good shepherd saves you, but the great shepherd supplies you whatever you have need of. Amen. He dwelt among us. He just tabernacled. Brother, 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 brother uh, uh, Jeffrey, he, he just hung out here a while so we can get an understanding. Amen. All he wants to do for us. Amen. Let me tell you what's missing today in Christianity. 
Instead of depending upon him, we're depending upon ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Number three, we say in V or C, however you want to put it down, he's the chief shepherd. First Peter chapter five, verse number four. First Peter chapter five, verse number four. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, when the chief shepherd mm -hmm. shall appear, Amen. you shall receive a crown of glory mm -hmm. that fadeth not Amen. away. The good shepherd was crucified. The great shepherd cares for us. But the chief shepherd is coming again for us. Amen. God is saying that ought to get you on some shoddy. Yeah, that's right. Amen. You don't have to deal with this like the rest of the world that don't know him are going to have to deal with this. Right. We get to go to heaven. Walk on streets of gold. That's right. And they got to go to a burning hell where the fires never quench. The worm dies not. They have an everlasting thirst that cannot be filled. You and I ought to be right now saying, thank God. That little verse right there. Made flesh and blood among us. But wait a minute, I ain't done yet. Why? Because he's a soldier and he's a shepherd. And I said, number three, he's a soldier. Yeah. Number three, he's a soldier. Listen to this. Are you still with me now? Yes. I sure hope you get this. <clears throat> he made flesh and dwelt among us. Colossians 2, verse 14 and 15. Bodying out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which were contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And watch. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, get this now, triumphing over them in it. What just happened here? God said, I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ was made flesh and dwelt among us. Of course, he took at the cross of Calvary and he, he took it and, and, and he took care of it. It's finished. He nailed it all to the cross. No more law we've got to follow. No more of these rules and regulations in order to get saved. As a matter of fact, it didn't save you anyway. It just pointed you to your need for the Savior. Yes, right. But notice what the Bible said in verse 15. Look at what the soldier Christ did. Having spoiled. That's a term, a military term. That's when you go to battle. That's right. And you take the spoils of war. That's right. And he spoiled what? Wait a minute now. He spoiled the principality. He took, he took the power from the principality. Mm -hmm. He took the power from the powers. And he made a, a show of them openly. In other words, <coughs> I didn't go in some back room and fight this battle. I didn't take it and try to hide while I was fighting this battle. The Bible says he made a show of them openly. Yep. He went to the cross of Calvary openly. Somebody help me, yep. amen. Yep. He went into a grave openly. Right. But he came up from the grave openly. How do you know that, preacher? Because he showed himself, according to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Yeah. He showed him to the apostle. He showed it to over 500 people. You know what he was saying? I ain't hiding. I ain't running. Why? Because I'm off the winning side. What does that mean for us? I'm glad you actually. Remember that old devil, old smutty face? Yeah. Remember how he came to Eve? He deceived her. He distracted her from what God's will was. And here's what God said. I defeated him for you. I destroyed him yeah. for you. Yeah. I defamed the old venomous snake for you. Amen. Amen. Well, I got to give you some verse so you can have something to really shout about. Yeah. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all speak, but we should all be chained in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be chained. Yeah. For this corruptible was put on incorruption, and this yeah. mortal was put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up. Swallow up in what? Victory. Amen. Yeah. We got the victory. We on the winning side. Yeah. The soldier Jesus Christ came and he spoiled principalities and powers. Wait a minute. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the Victory in our Lord yeah. Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Right. Amen. 
God is saying, you know what happened here on this Christmas? And you listen to me now. People are going to forget. Mm. Why? Because they don't remember. That's right. They don't remember. There's an old song, and I wish I could sing it. But it's called, It Is Finished. Yeah. Good one. It says there's a line that is drawn through the ages. And on that line stands an old rugged cross. Mm -hmm. And that cross a battle is raging to gain a man's soul or his loss. On one side march the forces of evil, all the demons and all the devils of hell. But on the other, the angel of glory, yes. that they might meet on Golgotha's hill. The earth shakes with the force of the conflict. The sun refuses to shine. But there hangs God's son in the balance. And then through the darkness, he cries. You know what he said, Miss Norma? It is finished. Yes. The battle is over. It is finished. There'll be no more war. Yes. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished. And Jesus yes. Christ is Lord. Amen. Yes. You can do whatever you want to when it comes to Christmas. I tell you what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to lift him up. Amen. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Amen. All men. Amen. I hope somehow you remember. And you never forget. Because when you forget, there's a world you will never know. That's right. That's right. You say it again. When you and I don't remember and we forget, there's a world who will never know. That's right. Amen. Oh, I sure hope you stick with us through this month. All I want to do is lift up Jesus. Amen. Amen. And today we started to help you understand he was made flesh and dwelt tabernacle among us. Yeah. Old song used to sing, darling, said he didn't have to do it, but he did. <laughs> he, he didn't come and do it because I paid him enough. Yeah. yeah. He did it because he loved me. That's right. Amen. Yeah. He didn't have to do it. But he did. And don't you ever forget yeah. all that he's done for you. Amen. And I don't preach it today to just say all you owe him, which we do. But if we learn to appreciate all he's done, it may change a little bit more of what we do. Yeah. Father bless now, I pray. I don't know, maybe there's somebody here who's not really saved. I don't know. And if they are here, I hope we didn't confuse or didn't get too detailed. I don't think.